There is nothing quite like the TT part of Titter Pigs, the tabletop. Perhaps you and your friends gather around the table to solve magical mysteries and City of Mist. Maybe your table is covered in the colorful heroic stylings of Sentinel Comics. Or maybe you're fighting dragons and delving into a sprawling dungeon map while playing a uh, certain system I think we all know and love. Yes, that's right, Dragon Bane. Whatever game or games you are playing, there is nothing quite like gathering around the table to create amazing stories with your friends. Except we can't always gather around an actual table. Maybe you don't have space to play in person. Maybe, maybe you're, you're playing, playing with, with people, people all across the country, the country or, or even, even the, the globe. globe. Or maybe there is some global event preventing you from getting together. Fortunately, you can always play remotely thanks to a little thing called Al Gore's internet. Now, some of us have been playing remotely for longer than some of you have been alive. But for a lot of folks, it's a little intimidating. How the hell do you get started? Well, thankfully, you've got me to be your guide. The first thing we need to address is what tech you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need a computer or at the very least a phone or tablet, though those last two are going to limit some of your other options. And you clearly have something because you're watching this video. Um, a Windows-based computer is going to give you the most possible options. However, Mac, Linux, and even Chromebooks will work with a lot of stuff out there. I would only recommend a phone or tablet if your group will be playing really simple games that don't require any specialized programs, like uh, some that we'll talk about in the next section. Next, we need to talk audio. Now, a lot of laptops, phones, and tablets have built-in speakers and microphones for communication. However, the quality might be lacking. Built-in mics and laptops and mobile devices can be okay, but might pick up a lot of sound around you. So if your house is noisy, your friends are going to hear everything. Best to find a quiet spot. Uh, you can get better mics that don't pick up much of that stuff. Uh, Yeti has a little desktop mic called the Snowball that runs between $40 and $50. Doesn't need any special mounts or anything. Just plug it into a USB plug and you should be good to go. And there are lots of options like that. You might need to adjust the levels on your computer with the help of your friends once you're on the call, but otherwise it is pretty low maintenance. Fancier mics will sound even better and might pick up fewer background sounds, however they also might run you more money. I mean, between the mic, the mounting arm, and the preamp, uh, let's just say the only reason I have this is because it's for my job. Unless you're planning to turn your game into a podcast, you don't need a mic like this. A cheaper mic will work just fine, at least so long as you have the right headphones. See, if you're using your speakers for sound, you might struggle with a little something called echo. echo. And by you might struggle, I mean your friends will. Because, because when, they when they talk, talk the, 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 the sound, sound from, from your speakers, speakers will, will bleed, bleed in to your, to your mic, mic and, and they, will, they hear will hear themselves. themselves. <laughs> Talking through your own delayed feedback is agony. So how can you avoid putting your friends through this? Well, some of the programs we're going to talk about have stuff to help mitigate this with software that tries to echo cancel. I found mixed success with this as it can affect sound quality or just not work that well. But if needed, it is better than nothing. Wearing headphones is the most obvious option. And hey, many come with built-in microphones that sound pretty decent. Uh, but we're often playing for three to four hours at a time, and that is a long time to be wearing headphones if you aren't a Twitch streamer with a dented head. You could get some bone conduction headphones, which are way more comfortable. Just remember to charge them before your session, like I sometimes remember to do. They also come with a built-in microphone technically, though not my favorite. However, there is another all-in-one option. Now, for transparency's sake, I'm gonna let you know this product was sent to me for free, along with some specs and possible talking points. Just know, they are not paying me, I've been testing it for a couple weeks, and they have no say over what I'm about to tell you. This is all me, and if I didn't like it, I would have just sent it back. Still, if this feels too advertisement-y to you, just scroll on forward to the next section. 
This is the Travolo from BenQ. It's a Bluetooth speaker and microphone built for online communication, especially for Discord and Zoom, which we'll be talking about in the next section. The microphone and speakers in this are designed with crystal clear communication in mind. The microphone has acoustic echo canceling and noise reduction technology built into the hardware. When gaming with friends, they could talk over me and each other as much and as loudly as they wanted, and they never once heard themselves. No echo. I asked them many times, and yeah, always nice and clear. What's more, I could hear them clear as day without needing to wear any headphones. Plus, they weren't being bombarded with all the noise the traffic makes on the fairly busy street I live on. Is the quality of the microphone as good as my studio mic? Or is the quality of their speech as full and bassy as my big old studio cans? Obviously not, but it is clear and way higher quality than a lot of cheaper options. Now at $209, I don't think it's for everyone, but I will add on that when not being used for remote tabletop gaming or even playing video games online with friends, which I did, I switched this bad boy over to music mode, which give the speakers rich bassy sound on par with similarly priced Bluetooth speakers. No joke, this thing has been my default computer speaker and fire pit music speaker for the last few weeks. So if you want something simple to set up that sounds clear, you can find it on Amazon or just go to BenQ.com. Oh, okay, we know what we're doing with audio. How about video? You don't typically need video to play these games, but I like to see my players' faces, you know? I want to know when I've devastated them. This is a case where laptops and mobile devices typically have you covered. Those cameras are often just fine. You don't need a fancy camera, especially when you're probably only going to be taking up a quarter of someone's screen or less at most. However, there are some cases where you might want to buy a USB webcam. First, if you're a desktop user like ya boy here, you'll need to. No built-in cameras for us. But also, if you're running a titter pig that would benefit from some kind of battle map and you've got all these miniatures and stuff you want to use, you could position your camera to show all of that to your players. You may just need a tripod to get that working. Of course, you may not need something like that if you use the right program. So, seamless transition. Now, I know most of you know this, but there are quite a few options for audio video chat, which are technically all you need for these games, but each option has different benefits. Zoom is really easy to use, and most of us learned how to use it from working during, uh, Plus, hey, this thing has a shared whiteboard that you can use for battle maps. Are they gonna be pretty? No, but will they work to let players know where everything is? Probably. Discord is another hugely popular choice. I've seen less consistent call quality with Discord, but if you take the time to learn how to use it, you can actually provide a lot of great additional tools for your game. Make a server for a particular game, and you can give the players private channels where they can take notes and send you messages. You can pop in pictures for them to see, and there are bots you can get that will let you play music and roll virtual dice, because if there's anything Thing I found titter piggers love, it's not getting to roll the physical math rocks they spent money on. <laughs> you can also absolutely use Facebook or Google Hangouts, but they aren't going to offer you any extras, which frankly might be fine by you for the game you're playing. Now, if you liked the sound of the extra stuff to help enhance your experience of your games, you might also be interested in utilizing a virtual tabletop or VTT. Look, I don't want to overwhelm you with too many options. Seriously, if you want a rundown of like 20 different VTTs, I have a whole video on just that, giving detailed descriptions and the pros and cons of each. But for this quick how-to video, is it quick? How long is it so far? Really? Anyway, for now, here are my broad recommendations for you based on difficulty and what they provide over each other. And Tabletop Simulator, folks, I swear to God, look, someone even gave me a full guided tour of your One World mod, and I still don't like it. I'm sorry, I really tried, but I'm not gonna recommend it here. You can extol its virtues in the comments if you want.
First, the easiest is Owl Bear Rodeo. It is just a super easy way to put down some maps, some text, tokens for characters, and even roll some dice. You don't need an account, and it will save what you've done to your internet browser cache. Even works on tablets, more or less. Next is Roll. This one has full character sheets, which are fully customizable. The community has fully functional sheets for just about every game you can imagine. It has a pretty slick and simple virtual map like Owlbears, and what's more, it actually has built-in audio video chat. You need to make a super quick account for free, but otherwise it's super easy to get into, and it works all right on a tablet. Not great on a phone, though. Alchemy RPG is my current go-to. It has voice and video chat and is more focused on theater of the mind play, though battle maps are available. Plus, it lets you easily make custom systems in it, though that is still pretty limited, so not every system will work there. If you want to have more than just a few characters and games on it, it will require a subscription. Still, it's more minimalist UI and focus on setting the scene, music, and style make it a great choice. Just kind of limited right now. However, they are promising to add a lot more systems and mechanics in the near future. Not an option on tablet or mobile, though. Roll20 has a ton more features, with maps where you can add walls and lighting, journals, there are super featureful character sheets for so many systems. Plus, you can play music that you and your players can hear in sync if you're cool like that. However, the learning curve is uh, getting up there. If you aren't comfortable with technology and probably spending a few hours looking at some tutorials, this might be more complicated than you want. Also, it's just overkill for more simple games. This one also had a built-in audio video chat, but it isn't as good as Roll or Discord or Zoom or even Skype or Google Hangouts. This used to have a tablet version, but it was awful and not something I would wish on my least favorite player. Yes, not even the rules lawyer. Foundry is Roll20, but with even more features, especially with all the extra features made by the community. Plus, it tends to look and work better than Roll20. However, if you like to play as many different titter pigs as I do, or even half as many, you're really rolling the dice on whether or not that game will be supported on Foundry. Out of the last eight games I purchased, the community had incorporated two into Foundry. The other six, I was completely out of luck. Plus, every time Foundry updates, you risk stuff made by the community no longer being compatible. If the game is available on Foundry, it will probably work better there than anywhere else. Otherwise, it may not be worth the trouble, especially since it's also harder to learn than Roll20. Mobile access is, once again, a no-go. Like I said, there are so many more options, but those are some of my favorites and pretty easy to get into. I would go into more details about each of these, but there just isn't time. My recommendation for most people who would like something with some functionality and a way to keep track of character stuff all in one place is Roll. That way you have audio and video chat, character sheets and battle maps and stuff all in one window, and since a lot of you might be playing on a laptop with a single screen, Roll will keep them from having to switch between windows or whatever. Now, you've got your virtual tabletops, but what about other digital tools? I mentioned battle maps and tokens to represent characters, but where do you get that stuff? For battle maps, there are, again, so many options, so I'll just mention a few. If you want to make some maps for yourself, Incarnate is a great resource. People post tons of maps on there for you to use, but you can also make your own with all their assets. And honestly, you can make some pretty amazing ones with not too much work once you get the hang of it. There is a subscription for certain aspects of it, but it's pretty reasonable. If you would like to do less work, Dungeon Alchemist is a super quick way to make battle maps and sprawling dungeons in just a few minutes. It is a one-time purchase and you just make some rooms and it auto-generates doors, windows, and features within the room, all of which you can edit and rearrange. What's more, you can export them to work with a number of VTTs with walls and lighting automatically done for you. It takes a little extra technical know-how, but honestly it isn't too hard to learn, though it is pretty much just fantasy, so if you're playing other games, too bad. Token Tool is an old program, but still supported and used for a reason. Just drag some art onto it, 
pick up order and drag the token out. Done, you've made a character token. It's free, it's super fast, and it is easy as hell to learn. Everyone who does VTT battle maps should have this program. And honestly, just search TTRPG or yeah, TND map generators and you'll find more tools online than you know what to do with. I started to make a list of them to cover in this video and as it turns out there is so much more than I think I could ever hope to cover unless I wanted this video to take up the next month of my life. I want this video to be a quick and useful resource for folks. It would be nice to see you all helping each other and getting along too because we are finally going to talk about... Yeah, you didn't think this video was going to be all about the technical aspects, did you? Playing online versus playing at the table can really change some dynamics, so it's a good idea to think about that stuff. First off, when you're sitting in front of your computer for four hours versus sitting around a table face to face, it can be hard to focus, especially with neurodivergent players. I personally really struggle to pay attention when I'm at a computer screen. If you do too, here are my tips. Fidget devices or minimal focus activities can really help keep you from scrolling socials or rearranging your desktop. I like to paint my nails because I can still completely focus on the conversation and talking while doing them. I have friends who like to knit or pluck on their guitar, though if you do stuff that can be distracting, you might want to go into your mic settings and change them to push to talk or just mute yourself when you aren't speaking. And other folks at the virtual table respect that some players do this as a way to help focus, not because they aren't focusing. Second, note taking. Every GM wishes you would do it. Well, if you're on a PC or laptop, now you can take group notes in a Discord channel or on a shared Google Doc. This is another way to help players focus on what's happening and stay more engaged. Plus, you can share funny pictures and stuff in those notes. Third, take regular breaks, or at least be okay with your players getting up and moving around. Sitting in place staring at a screen is a lot more taxing than sitting at a table. Plus, when you're in person, it's so easy to get up, wander around the room, grab a snack, all of that. Unless you are really intense with your games in person, which, hey, you do you, I guess. If you can, take your computer or whatever to a comfortable spot where you can move around a bit, but also, Take a break as a group every hour or two. Some folks work in front of computers all day, so having their escapist fantasies taking place in front of them isn't always ideal. Finally, try to respect each other when talking. At a traditional table, you could have multiple conversations all going at once. The DM talking with a player, a couple other players discussing a plan, and a few more players joking with each other. This doesn't really work on voice chat where everyone hears everyone equally. So try to give each other a little extra space when talking because it is really easy for folks to start to trip over each other when trying to talk. It definitely won't be as fluid and jokes won't be as perfectly timed as when you play face to face, but that's the trade-off. And really, that's about all I have to say. I'm not even 100% sure if this video will be helpful to newcomers or not. It was, strangely, a lot more complicated than I thought when I set out to write this little guide, but hell, I've been wrong in the past. I guess that's all I have on the script, uh, you know, so yeah, there's a script. I, I have a teleprompter. You didn't, did you know that? Did you? Could probably tell. Look at me when I'm in front of the computer, my eyes wandering, terrible. Um, working on a bunch more videos. Um, I've got more how to play guides in the work. Um, I'm possibly working on some actual plays. I'm working on a lot more quick short form content because I like working on the shorts, they're fun. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I got some time, you know. I'm trying new things. I like, I'm trying to be on camera more. I'm having fun with it. Clearly I have a green screen and I'm not actually standing in front of the things you've seen behind me. I don't know. Um, do you like my new kilt? It's pretty great. <laughs> Bye.